Hey guys, Andrew McFarland here from StartAJuiceBar.com and today I wanted to do a video on how to start a juice bar. Now this video is going to be really an overview. It's not going to be overly specific in each section. There are a lot of videos on the YouTube channel that go into greater detail on each subject and there's also more videos on the website. Also before I forget, there's a link to an ebook down below. It's a free ebook, so for those of you who want to go deeper, you can download the ebook and it will also walk you through a step by step process of how to start a juice bar. Now, before I get into the topic, uh, I just want to give you a little background on who I am, where I come from, so you know who's giving you this information. Uh, I have personally run my own company uh, for about five years in the Los Angeles, California area. We originally started with a juice truck, then we opened a store. Then we opened another store, uh, so we had multiple locations, and uh, the company was quite successful. Uh, so just know that this information isn't coming from a speculative speculative place. Uh, this is actually coming from practical and tangible experience. Um, and I also relate to you very much because the truth is, is when I was starting my company, I know I went on YouTube to do a lot of research, and and uh, unfortunately there were no YouTube channels dedicated to people who want to start juice bars. So I had to make a lot of mistakes. And uh, I learned from those mistakes, so hopefully this channel will help you and uh, this video will give you an idea of what you need to look into to start this kind of business. So the first thing you want to look at is your position within the company. Now why is that important? Because the truth is, is that everybody has different gifts. Different people have different natural dispositions for what they're great at. Now you might be a great marketer. You might be really into the numbers and into the administration. You might be really great with people. Now, your, your business is going to benefit the most when you are doing what you love and what you're great at. Now, a lot of entrepreneurs just have this mentality of, I'm just going to do whatever it takes. And it's true. It's good to have that, that mentality. Don't let go of that. But it's also important to realize strategically what role you're going to play within your business so you can best support yourself and your company. So that's all I'm going to say on that topic. The next thing you want to look at is what is your company and brand about? What do you guys stand for? Now, in this topic of marketing and branding, I want to just start by defining the difference between the two. A lot of times people think marketing and branding are the same thing and they're actually different. Uh, now, what is marketing? Marketing is the strategies and efforts you put out into the world to raise awareness about your brand about your company. Your brand is the perception that your customers and your clients have in their mind about who you are and what you do. You might know certain companies that when you think about them, you attribute specific adjectives to their business. They might be really playful. They might be really intelligent. They might be really efficient. They might have great customer service. Now, these are all things that contribute to what makes a brand. So think about that. And why do you think about that so early? Because you're going to infuse this into every avenue of your business. The next topic that we're going to cover is the menu. And you want to infuse what your brand is about in the menu. Now to touch on a little bit about this menu uh, topic, there are a few things that make a great menu. One, you want to make sure that your menu is cost effective. It's efficient to create, right? Um, that there are things in your menu that your clientele can connect to, but also things that they are not aware of that maybe they're interested in exploring, right? It will allow them to really feel like this is a place that is offering them uh, growth in the world of their health. Uh, but also, let me talk about why do we start with the menu so early? Because I've seen so many people wait till a week before they open to start doing their menu and I feel like that's a huge mistake because your menu in truth is connected to everything. It's connected to how you design your space physically. It's connected to, uh, like I said, your profits, your, your, how much you're going to make off of each drink. It's connected to even depending on how large your menu is and I don't recommend starting with a very, very large menu. Um, but it's going to dictate how much your training costs are going to be, right? Because think about it. If you have a massive menu, every time you hire a new staff member, you have to train them on that menu. And so 
you really want to make sure that your menu is easy to execute and very clear and doesn't overwhelm the customer. And I have a whole topic too on the menu and how to cost a menu out, all those things, uh, but we won't dive too deeply into it. We'll just keep this, this ball rolling. The next thing that we want to look at is doing your budget. Your budget is your financial roadmap. Now, as a caveat to all of this, you want to start from the very, very beginning doing your business plan. You're going to add these topics and the information that you gather in these topics into your business plan. So getting back to your budget. There's two ways to approach your budget. One way is this is how much money I have to spend and working backwards from there, making sure that you can actually open your business based on how much you have to spend. Another way to approach it is from the back forward. You do all of your due diligence, your research on how much your business is gonna cost you to open and then you fill in that information and figure out this is the amount of money I need to raise or save or get a loan for, so on and so forth. So, and you're, just be aware too, your budget is dynamic. It's not going to just stay the same. You're not going to, you might save money in certain areas, you might spend more money in other areas, and you're going to update it constantly. So, that's the next thing that you want to look at. Beyond that, you're going to start looking at your equipment. Now, as I said before, your menu is going to dictate the equipment that you need. So call equipment vendors, talk to other people, figure it out. Obviously, if you're running a juice bar, you need juicers. Uh, if you are making smoothies, you need smoothies. If you're making salads, you might need food processors, you need knives, you need cutting boards, all of these things. So go through your menu, create your inventory list, figure out how you're going to process all these recipes, and make sure that you get the proper amount of equipment for that. The next thing that you want to look at is your location. Now, what do you want to consider in finding a great location? The number one thing you want to make sure of is that the area that you're in has a demographic that is interested in the product that you serve. So if you're in a area where people are really interested in high quality products, but your business model is to do things very inexpensively, they won't care because that's not what they want. So you wanna make sure that whatever location you choose, the clientele there are very interested in the product that you serve. That's the first thing. The next thing is, is being aware of, are there partnerships, are there businesses that have the same clientele that will also come to you, gyms, yoga studios, so on and so forth. Beyond that, just convenience. As they've always said, location, location, location. The more convenient it is for anybody to end up at your location, the more often they'll be there. It's just that simple. I've seen people with great products in poor locations struggle. I've seen people in uh, great locations with not the best product really thrive. So know that your location really could make your business. So uh, think about that. And then uh, the next thing that you want to go into is potentially, this doesn't apply to everybody, but hiring an architect, hiring a contractor, building out your space, getting all the permits to do that. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because it doesn't apply to everybody, but it's something that you just want to look into doing. Now, beyond that, we're going to look into hiring our staff. This is really important because your staff is one of the backbones of your business. Uh, if you personally don't have a lot of experience in the food service world, I highly recommend you find people who do. If you can afford to hire a great manager, hire a great manager because it will make all the world of difference. This is one of those lessons that I, I had to learn along the way and I, I'm grateful that I, I made it through those growing pains but there were times where honestly I wasn't sure that we were going to because there were so many things that I didn't know because the food service business is an art and a science and a lot of times people who start these businesses are very creative and they might have the artistic element down they can make the food so on and so forth but they don't have the science of how do I technically run this business and someone who has managed restaurants before will know how to do that so invest in your staff because the, the, the return on that investment will be 10, 20 fold, okay? Uh, the next thing you wanna do is start creating some of your written materials, your employee manual, your uh, par list, your inventory list, and you can work with your management staff on this if you have a management staff. Then beyond that, really it's just gonna be a matter of 
planning your opening. Now I recommend that you do a soft opening. What's a soft opening? A soft opening is where you don't heavily publicize and market your opening to the masses. It's something where you'll allow family and friends to come in. You might do a little post on Facebook or some other social media platforms, but your intention is to allow the flow of business to be gradual so you can have your staff training in the process. You might do some training days where there's nobody in the, in the space, but then eventually you can allow people to trickle into your business. Then you can plan your grand opening if you feel that it's necessary. So that's it. Like I said, this is really just an overview to give you an idea of things you want to think about with your business. And as I mentioned before too, click the link below if you want to download the free ebook. And uh, I'm always available to you guys as well. Starterjuicebar.com. If you want to email me, it's just andrew at starterjuicebar.com. Wishing you guys a lot of success in all of your endeavors, and I'll see you guys soon.